All right, hello. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Blaine, AKA the Plaid Lad, and I am back here in Manistee National Forest. And it is looking like much more of a winter wonderland than even last time. And I'm very, very excited about that. And so is my companion, Marion's with us this time. It's her first time at Manistee River and her first time winter camping. So it's gonna be a real treat. We're not uh, worrying about crushing miles or anything today. And we're not doing the whole loop um, just cause we don't wanna crush miles and all this snow. So we don't really have much of a plan. We're just gonna kinda walk till we find a pretty spot, set up camp and go from there. Try to make a fire, see how things go. Stay tuned. Okay, so we parked at the Seton Creek Campground, which is closed for the season. So technically we parked just outside of it. So we don't have to pay the parking fee that's usually there. At least I don't think so. I've done it before, I've never gotten the ticket. <laughs> and um, we have to take this little side trail, which adds about a mile uh, before we actually get onto the real loop. Well, a little treacherous at this part. Um, but it's uh, actually going to be, despite it looking more wintry, it's going to be warmer on this trip than it was on my last trip here last month. Um, it got down to 17 at night. Um, it's only supposed to get down to 28 um, tonight. So we'll see. In all likelihood, it'll probably get down to like 25. That's because it's usually a few degrees cooler out here than uh, the forecast gives for the towns and stuff. But uh, we'll see. It's supposed to snow on and off all day and, and overnight. So it'll give me all the good, all the good winter feels. Hit a little snag. It was a really big deadfall over there, so I don't know if it's showing up on camera too good. We had to climb up on this ridge, and uh, there was footprints down here before. So this must be the way people have been going since that fell. See how I do. Oh. Don't want to fall again. Oh. All right, I can't film and do this. Okay, we made it to the Manistee River Trail from the Spur Trail, which is marked here with the suspension bridge. But we're not gonna cross it today because that'll take us over to the North Country Trail side and we're not doing that this trip. So we are going to head that way for the MRT.
All right, so we just hit our first kind of major view from high up of the river. How, what are you thinking so far? It's lovely. Yeah. I told you this Enjoy is the best it. place in the Lower Peninsula to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is why I love it here. Don't get views like this anywhere else that I know of in the Lower Peninsula. If you do, drop a comment if you know of anywhere else, because I'd be interested in that. So we're about three miles in huh? and uh, we're at the campsite where I stayed last time, but we're going to press forward. When I reached here last time, I had done something like 12 miles, so we're going to hike at least a little bit more today, see what we can find. It's a Thursday, so there shouldn't be too much competition at Thursday, on Thursday at, in the morning for a campsite here, I'm hoping. A few moments later. Okay, so we didn't go too much farther. We're at site 2C. I've always wanted to stay here. I never have. Give you a tour in a little bit, but uh, first we're gonna set up camp and everything. Okay, camp is all set up, finally. So, right over here is where I'm gonna be staying. And uh, I'll go through all the components of 
my shelter and sleep system and all that later. And then Marion's right over here. Maybe she'll grace us with a tour of her setup later as well. All right, that's a yes. And you can see we got our own little creek right here. So we don't have to go far for water at all, which is awesome. And we have a fire pit here. Some people brought a ton of logs. Almost everything's wet because every time I go, all the wood is wet. But we're gonna try, we're gonna try. If you watch this channel a lot, you know not to get your hopes up, but we're gonna try. Uh, anyway, keep walking down here is the trail. And uh, the creek empties out into a, a little waterfall just past the bridge there. And the trail continues up that way. So, it's a nice little site. Not like a view, like some of the other sites, but it's very private, very tucked away. So, we're digging it. We're digging it. So now we're gonna make ourselves either a hot beverage or a hot meal. I'm probably gonna do just a hot meal. And uh, then we might go explore a little bit. And we got to camp a little after 10 in the morning. So we got a lot of time to kill. The snow's starting up again. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be a pretty chillax camp experience. Look at that. Getting her stuff ready. <laughs> That's the BRS stove, right? Yes. BRS. Toke's pot. Toke's pot. My nice little koozie you made for it there. Nice. All right, I'm gonna start getting my stuff set up now. Check with you in a bit. Well, there has been a casualty. I forgot to bring my Reflectix koozie. So now I have to rehydrate this the barbarian way, exposed to the elements. I can't believe I forgot that thing. I cleaned it out after my last video because I found out it stank and I forgot to, forgot to pack it. Completely forgot it. <sighs> it's gonna be a long trip. All right, trying this um, Irish Shepherd's pie for the first time. Marion's had it a few times. She says it's pretty good, and it is. It's already a little cold though. I really wish I had that koozie. <laughs> mm. Still warm enough to hit the spot. And I boiled enough water to make some high apple cider. So I did that. Tried out a new stove. It's the Soto Windmaster. I didn't time it. I've never timed my jet boil. I think it was even faster than my jet boil. And that piezo lighter. It doesn't suck. Alright. That meal did us some good. Now we're starting the firewood process of our day. Um, I just split my first log, um, or batoned it. Everything's dry in the center so far. 
So that bodes well. But there's also a lot of ice in there. Um, <laughs> so we don't know how successful we'll be, but there's not much else to do. So we might as well just process some firewood. My batons keep breaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we processed firewood for a good little while. Got a little tired of that. We have a lot of time to kill. Um, so we decided we're just gonna go explore the trail a little bit since Marion's never been here before. Yep, we're gonna go up that way. <laughs> GoPro battery died there. Uh, so yeah, we're going on another hike but leaving all of our stuff, kind of base camping a little bit. Just see some more sights. checking out we found a cool little uh, uh <laughs> we found a cool campsite <laughs> um it's a dispersed site but that's the cool thing about this place too is if all the official sites are taken you can disperse camp the only reason i prefer the regular sites over a dispersed site like this is the fire rings um this is definitely someone made this themselves I like having the tall metal fire rings. So, but uh, if I come, were to come in the summer again and this were the only site available, yeah, I'd take it. stopped at one more quick overlook. We have done a little over a mile and a half um, walking away from camp. So we're gonna start heading back now just because now we've added a little over three miles to our day, which, hey, it gets us over six miles. So not too bad. It's way easier without a pack. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's the plan. Back to camp. So this wasn't fun coming up and it is worse going down. This is just a mudslide. Yeah, Ooh, this looks dry. Okay. Whoa, whoa. The ground is dry, but there's wet mud on the bottom of my boots.
Whew, success. Okay. So we're all back at camp. We just changed into our at camp clothes. And uh, Marion's gonna show us her little home away from home. So, it's flash air two. Flash air two, okay. And... See, Big Agnes sleeping big pad. Big Agnes sleeping pad with a... Do you know which, which one this is? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, you might want to put more air in this again. It's already deflated. Actually, I think I have the same one. I can't remember what it's called, though. Um, anyway. And then a pad underneath with some reflex sticks underneath that. Nice. And then 20 degree quilt with a 30 degree bag with a liner. Oh wow, all right, so and you're gonna that, be super toasty. I hope so. Yeah. And, and, and what's I the R value on the path? Four point something? Four point something? Four point seven, four point five. Wow, okay. Or four point three, so, four point something. All right, you're gonna be really warm. I, don't know. <laughs> I hope so. And then yeah. I put that, my um, pack liner, uh -huh. just in case my foot box. Oh yeah, and touches the side yeah. and gets condensation. I don't think it will, but I'm paranoid about it. So. Well. We're probably going to get condensation because we have yeah. the creek right there. Right. And That's the downside. Out. Yeah. But at least even with the doors closed, this vent's pretty decent. Yeah. No, it's, so. it's, I've never had an issue with it in the yeah. summertime with yeah. condon too much condensation anyway. Oh, and those must be the lightened equipment booties? Yes. Awesome. And the hood's in there too. Oh, somewhere. you have a hood too? Yeah. It's the same yeah. color, so it's Oh, probably... okay. Oh, it's under oh, the booty. Yeah, it's there. underneath. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I don't even got the hood too. Okay, yeah, and I can see the reflectix there in the corner. A little Nemo pillow. All right. Underneath. Sweet. Oh, he'll talk. I have the same exact uh, bag with me. I use that as my clothing bag. Yeah. The hilltop pack. It's the perfect size for a clothing bag. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. All right, so she's going to be ridiculously warm tonight. Like, <laughs> with that system, I bet you could probably get down to like minus 10. We'll see. Yeah. I sleep pretty cold, so. Yeah. <laughs> now, thank you very much for showing us your wares. <laughs> All right, now it's time for me to show you my setup. Um, you've seen bits and pieces of this before if you've seen any of my other videos. Um, but uh, it's more or less the same as it usually is. But for the winter time, I have the UGQ Winter Dream 12 tarp, which it looks like. A bird might have already pooped on, so that's cool. <laughs> I have my uh, trekking poles um, to, to pull out the tarp a bit. Come in through here. See, it makes, makes it a, have a lot more living space. Makes changing under here a lot, a lot better. I'm probably going to put my uh, tea candle lantern somewhere in this space tonight later on there it's a bit of a mess because i just changed and all that stuff in here but um rocking a ugq um 20 degree bandit um trying out the thermarest compressible pillow this is the breathalyzer from dutchware this is going to collect all of well not all of but a lot of the condensation so uh, as I'm breathing out, it's going to be kind of over like this. Um, it just snaps into, uh, into the little D-rings here. And uh, that'll catch most of my condensation coming out. But I will also probably be sleeping with this. This is new for this trip. It's the uh, Appalachian Gear Company Neck Gator. This is a pretty thick wool, so I'm thinking breathing into that will catch a lot of it too. Um, have my usual little Dutchware pocket. Um, let me see here. Oh, this is uh, the Polar Jammer from All Things Outdoors on Etsy. 
and it's just a little insulated pouch. It's not cold enough to where it'll affect my batteries too much yet, so I didn't put my hand warmer in, but I'm gonna put a hand warmer in there tonight to keep my batteries warm, so that way I don't have to sleep with absolutely everything. Um, I'm using the top cover, which is why I'm worried about condensation a little bit. I do usually get condensation in this, but it's usually not that bad. It's not dripping on me or anything, so I can live with it. And then I have a peak loft here. I just have my raincoat and that. But pretty much everything else I have inside the Dutchware side sling. Um, I'm liking the side sling a lot more for winter because I have a lot more stuff. But this is just keeping all of my stuff I want to keep handy, handy. And uh, then I'm just decided I'm just going to hang my pack here on this tree, I'm using the, uh, the little uh, speed hook, I think they call it. The new thing from Apex Giant. So that's uh, Casa de Blaine for today. Just realized I forgot to talk about my under insulation. Silly me. Um, so I have my Dutchwear under quilt protector and a war bonnet Yeti. 20 degree, three quarter length under quilt. Um, I have taken that down to like 22 and I was still warm, but I could tell I didn't want to go much more than that. Um, but I love that under quilt. I have two of them. I have the 40 and the 20. Um, I kind of want to get a zero degree one too. Uh, they're so nice because they take up so little space in your pack and fantastic. Love them. All right, so Marion's filtering some water, <laughs> and she's using was it the Sawyer Micro or the Sawyer, Sawyer Mini? Mini? The Sawyer Mini, and that is our flow rate. Yeah, this is assisted so. flow rate. Yeah, and that's with her squeezing. Oh, wow! A little better. It's a little better, but still. <laughs> um, it's several, so several two years old now. Okay. Three, two and a half, yeah. something like that. It's time to get a new one. It's time to get a new one, and also not that one. Uh, I'm never gonna buy that filter. No, don't. I'm never doing a review on it. This is my review. Don't buy the Sawyer Mini. The regular Sawyer Squeeze, fantastic. Don't get the Mini or the Micro. <laughs> Look, everybody, it's trying. Shh, don't be too loud. You'll startle it. <laughs> All right, now it is fire time. It's just about four o'clock. Sun's gonna be going down in a little less than an hour and a half. And we've just been sitting around getting a little colder, so <laughs> this is our strategy. Because it's all ice down here, there was already wood in here that's kind of frozen in there, so we're using that as our base. Um, so that way we don't get our fire wet from a puddle. And then Marion brought these little cube fire starters. I brought my Mickwick fire starter. We kind of have like a log cabin TP hybrid going here. And uh, we're gonna see see how that goes. Marion went and found some uh, some tinder earlier too. Just found some dry stuff, which is not easy today. So fingers crossed. I'll have a we'll have a fire this time. I think yours went out. <laughs> So I figured out what the problem with my fire making is. It's me. I'm the problem. Uh, Marion is great at making fires because this is starting to cook. Even with uh, all the stuff being a little wet. And uh, it's fun to just watch her work. If you look right, right in the middle of those trees, you can see a deer has decided to grace us with its presence. There's actually two deer here. There's that one, and there's another guy a little closer. Neat. All right, 
right, so we're starting to cook a little dinner now. Uh, Marion's taking advantage of the awesome fire that she built. Because uh, she's used to play with fire as a kid. Oh, and my water just finished boiling. I am going to try this uh, new mountain house everybody's been talking about. See if it's worth the hype. Okay. Moment of truth. Because I'm calling it. Uh, I'm gonna try. Try this. First I couldn't get it closed. Now I can't get it open. <laughs> Keep my thumb beast. Alright. Here's a little look in there. Let's see. Holy crap. You good? It's so good. <laughs> um, best thing from Mountain House I've ever had. Holy crap. This is actually like a decent buffalo mac and cheese too. It's like my favorite food. Uh, Pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And it's not too soupy either. <laughs> so I already inhaled my buffalo chicken mac and cheese. That was so good. Um, and Marion's just, well, didn't finish, but she got hungry enough to go after it. So tell us, let, let's take a look at what you got. It's biscuits with some sort of mushroom mix. I don't okay. remember where I got it from, and I don't remember the name of it, uh -huh. but it's pretty good. All right. Solid. Yeah. Yeah, we've got about a little less than an hour until the sun goes down. I'm pretty tired. We both woke up around four in the morning. So, starting to wind down a little bit. Probably gonna go to bed a little earlier, or at least lying down a little earlier. Once the sun really starts to go down, what's already starting to set a little bit. So, I talked about this in my last trip video, but uh, I'm gonna have me some fudge from the Armada Fudge Company. Uh, from my small town. If you're ever in southeast Michigan, you're in the area, stop by. Excellent fudge. Um, but the reason I like fudge for winter trips is it's high in fat. And things that are high in fat take a longer time to digest, which means your body is working harder to digest that. Your body is working harder to digest it uh, is keeping you warmer. So I'm hoping by eating this fudge, and this is the Armada Tiger Claw high school mascot. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, anyway, by, by burning all that fat throughout the night, it should keep you warmer longer. So, hoping that that ends up being the case. Pop this open. Alright. I'm made of colors. Go Tigers. And we actually went to the same high school, but uh, at different times. <laughs> She's nodding in agreement. <laughs> Things are dying down a little bit more now. I'm uh, boiling some water to put in my Nalgene bottle. Keep me nice and toasty. Marion's doing the same. But we're probably gonna be hit, hitting the hay pretty soon. The sun's, sun's gonna be down pretty quick here. And uh, I've already been awake for 13 hours today, so I'll probably watch a movie and, and all that fun stuff.
All right, all tucked in for the evening. Last I checked, it was 36 degrees outside, so cold, but not terrible. I got to try to see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 36 degrees. Probably just going to sleep in all my clothes. And I've got that... Uh, face mask on for later keep my nose nice and warm I'll put my sleep mask on and I'll be good but it's uh it's about six o'clock I think yeah it's about six o'clock so it's pretty early but the sun's already down and uh yeah so I'm gonna watch a movie and go to sleep Finally awake. It's almost 10 in the morning. So I slept a good long time. Oh. It's 30 degrees in here. But it's 27 outside. I don't know if Marion's awake yet. I feel bad that I slept this late. But I also don't want to leave this cocoon of warmth. Oh. I feel so toasty. I had to pee a lot last night. But I didn't end up getting up and losing all my heat every time. I just kind of lean over the side of the hammock and you know, just kind of let it rip. I gotta pee again and we gotta start packing up. So it's time to get out of this thing.
Oh man, we got some a little bit of snow last night. That was a nice thing to wake up to. What was even better to wake up to was a fire that had nothing to do with my making. All courtesy of Mary. <laughs> How'd you sleep? Eh, okay. My hips started hurting me, but other than that, I was warm. Yeah. And, uh... Tossed the water bottle out. Too hot. Too hot? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing to... Good problem to have this time of year. <laughs> Oh, and she's a real trooper for letting me sleep in until nearly 10 a.m. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the hot fire. <laughs> it is, it is a good thing to wake up to. First thing. Oh. All right. Got, gotta start getting, getting moving a bit. All right, we got all packed up and uh, left no trace. No garbage in the fire pit. No garbage around camp. We've got everything. It's the nice thing about the snow, it makes everything pop out. So now we're gonna hike out the way we came in yesterday. And uh, hopefully it uh, didn't get too icy overnight because we're going all uphill. <laughs> We uh, just made it back to the suspension bridge, which is the junction point um, to head back to the trail that'll take us to Seton Creek Campground, which is where we parked the car. Um, but now we're officially off the loop and it should be about a mile and a half back to Seton Creek. Okay, we just made it back to the car. Didn't film a lot on the way out because it's all the same stuff yesterday. But uh, thank you all very much for watching, especially if you made it through the end. You're the real MVP. And I will see you all on the next one. Okay. So we just stopped off for, for lunch. We're at the Timbers. It's about 30 minutes from where we parked. Um, it's on M115 by 13th Street. And look at that. I got a lovely bit of chicken parmesan. Arian's got a, wow, the toast of the bun. Amazing looking burger. So, I usually stop here on the way back when I come up to Manistee. So if you're ever in the area, highly recommend it. Great food, air prices. It's on your way home if you're heading south. So.